Oh, it's been many years in the making, but we're the tallest people in North Africa right now, the highest mountain in North Africa. Unbelievable. So it all started when I was in high school hanging out with a group of lads and they wanted to go do their Duke of Edinburgh award which I had never heard of but it meant that I got a weekend away from my parents, uh, a weekend camping in the mountains. I had never stepped foot in the mountains before in my life and we got dragged up sleeve burner up the steep side and at that time I was on my hands and knees with a big rucksack on my back, tears streaming down my face thinking what am I doing? And I got to the summit and seen the views and, and that was it. That, them tears changed to a smile. And the views were absolutely amazing and from that point on I was hooked. So just got off a flight there, landed in at Marrakesh about 9 o'clock this evening uh, and got through. Mohammed picked us up and we went for a lovely tajine, met him, had a nice tea uh, and just had a, a good chat and discussed everything that's going to be happening. Uh, just laying out all our gear, getting everything ready, making sure everything's packed and I've got everything because uh, I left my wallet at home. So. I'm um, just making sure I've got everything before we head on up the, the mountain. So I think I'll get all this into the bags, get our head down and get an early night. So I completed all my Duke of Edinburgh awards and went on to join the Air Force where I served for seven years and completed three tours of Afghanistan. Um, I met Chloe, my wife, while I was in the Air Force and we both decided that we wanted to start a family and it wasn't really ideal to to bring up a family while we were both traveling and moving about the place so we decided to leave and, and come back home um, and I was just working job to job paycheck to paycheck trying to make ends meet really and it was one day on my lunch break um, that I met my mate Mark So yeah, I didn't do anything uh, half as interesting as Afghanistan or anything like that. I was just into, I was just into taking photos. But we did end up on lunch, a lot together, sort of working out like what is it we're going to do? Like if what can we do now to not go back to work? But we just talked a lot about like what do we would we rather be doing? And it wasn't that we were so down on our job. We just knew that there was a bit we wanted to do something bigger. Um, and then. I kind of were like started hatching these plans of what we're going to do and then I took uh, I took a bit of a heart issue which sort of knocked me off my feet for like nine months which was a bit of a pain in the ass so yeah um, our plans kind of went uh, on the back burner for a wee bit So the mules will be stuffed here, uh, and the porters they will be stuffed carrying the luggage from here up to Nagna Refuge. We will stay in the uh, French Alpine. Okay. Yeah, there was a snow one. So the snow, the snow line starts from here. We mm -hmm. mean for it. Okay. Because there is two refuges. There yeah. is the Moflo Refuge and there is a. Uh, you ready to go? Yeah. 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 Yalla. After knowing Mark for a few months and his heart issues, I thought it would be nice to climb Kilimanjaro for the British Heart Foundation. Everything that he had been through 
and what these guys were doing for people in his situation. I had to challenge myself really, so I went and climbed Kilimanjaro, met this awesome team who were doing it. We all summited, came back, and then we kind of put on our own trip to go and take on Tupkil uh, in the north of Africa, the highest mountain in North Africa. So in 2019, we went out to Morocco to take on Jebel Tupkil, and when we arrived, it was a blizzard, it was snowing, and it wasn't looking promising. We got as far as the refuge and we had to turn back the next day and uh, there was just no chance um, of safety and everything that we were going to summit Tupkil. So we came back a bit defeated Um, I was a bit gutted really about what had happened uh, and trying to process everything. I then booked the expedition for the next year thinking that I would go back uh, in the winter of 2020 to take this on and, and complete it. Uh, so we just got the bus out of Marrakesh there, um, up in the Ilmil. Mohammed put on a, a pot of tea for us, we sorted out all our gear. Met the, the rest of the crew um, that I'm taking up to the top and we're just walking up now to the village of uh, Amrad and uh, yeah we'll push on up the mountain. Yeah with the, the weather looking so good um, it's looking very very likely and very positive that we'll make it to the summit this time. So yeah he came back he wasn't happy like his face was tripping him. Well, he was enjoyed the trip but he was just gutted that he didn't manage the summit but he instantly started talking about he wanted to do it again like pretty much the next year um, that he wanted to go on summit again and then we came up with sort of like my sort of photography I was getting into film and him being out and we're like this is it we're going to go and film him summiting again yeah, so that was the big idea I was going to go out with him um, because he'd done Kelly for the for the heart for the heart foundation and then I was starting to get back on my feet and he was like right we'll go out together I can film and photograph it and he can go and summit and it's kind of two birds with one stone that's what we're going to do that was the idea now to growing concerns about the deadly coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. Here's what we know. A Washington state resident fell ill after returning from Wuhan, China, where the outbreak began. Officials now say more than 400 people have been sickened. Without a huge national effort to stop the spread of coronavirus, there will come a moment when no health service in the world could possibly cope. By staying at home, we can protect our NHS and save lives. So I got back in 2019, we had planned to go back in 2020 uh, and tackle this and, and take it off. Everything was looking amazing, ready to go for it. And then the world stopped with the pandemic. One week turned into one month and one month rolled on into a year. And it didn't look promising. It didn't look like we were ever going to get back to complete this project. So we decided to, to get out in the moorings in our local mountains and explore and start taking video and photos and stuff and I tried to set up my own business guiding people in the moorings and taking people out rock climbing and stuff and I'd bring Mark along with me to, to take photos and try to market it as best we could and a few weeks turned into a few months and a few months turned into a year and it still never looked like we were ever going to get back to, to take on Tupco. But as time progressed on, that itch, that drive to get back there just got stronger and stronger. Oh, so we just had like an amazing glass of fresh orange juice, probably the, the freshest orange juice I've ever had, uh, so refreshing on this really really hot day. Uh, we've just stopped before lunch here um, to get our passports checked, the whole way up the mountain there's these checkpoints, uh, there was an incident on the mountain a few years back uh, and they've installed these checkpoints just to, to protect the tourists but also the, the guides working up here and to make sure that we're using guides um, and it's helping the economy and everything as well so yeah it's, it's really nice to see that we're safe on the mountain but the guides are uh, being looked after as well.
we wanted to get back and do something bigger and didn't necessarily need to be too cool but both of us working together you could see there was a spark there there was something working really nice and we wanted to take on a, a bigger project than just the morns together and I was hoping that the borders and everything in Tupco were going to open and we were going to get back and make this documentary but nothing seemed to nothing seemed to open uh, it just felt like that we were on pause forever trying to get back into this country so after a long year and a half Mohammed, my guide and liaison person in Morocco started dropping hints that the borders might open in the new year so I had a group of friends who wanted to join me on this first expedition um, to get out there so we started getting things in places, they were getting their passports sorted, they were getting all their gear gathered up, we were getting excited, ready to go, that this might finally happen. And then I got a text from Mark's wife, Lindsay. He was back in hospital. Um, the good thing though about this time was it wasn't severe as the first time. Um, they only gave me a period of six weeks off my feet where I wasn't allowed to do anything. Um, as much to sort of Sean's credit, he was trying to sort of be optimistic when he was talking to me, but you could kind of hear that he was that he was thinking ah, he's going to go ahead without me. So six weeks was October, six weeks led us into Christmas, which we both sort of spent time like with our family. And then he gave me a phone call to say, like, let's get out, new year, look, don't worry about it. We'll get into the mountains, he's going to start taking me up all these different places. We'll get the fitness back. I started buying, like, new stuff, like, let's, let's go. Um, and then on our first trip, he then texted me to tell me that he had got COVID and he got it pretty bad. So as today, we have to stay one team. Yes. Because yeah. as you say, it was one group, uh, I think it's from any country of Pakistan. They was in front of us. I don't want to put someone in the middle of us. We will be in the problem and you will be in the problem. So we stay now poly poly after the table until when we find like a the place then we cross them. Or if some another group if they're strong an example than us, so we have to give them the road to move. So we have to stay one team. <coughs> Okay, good. And tomorrow is the same way, all the way down. Yeah, uh, so we just arrived up the, the refuge there and had some lovely dinner again. Uh, bit of an iffy tummy, but I suppose it's expected with the, the altitude and stuff and the lovely sunburnt face that I've got. Um, everyone's getting their heads down nice and early tonight for an early rise we're up at four o'clock and out of here there's a really short sharp steep bit that we uh, need to get out of the way first so you're probably not going to see us until we're hopefully on the summit yeah just because that first bit is really not safe it's a really narrow ridge and we're crampons axes uh, full concentration on what we're doing so i just put all the cameras away we'll focus on getting up that bit and i'll uh, hopefully see you when the, the sun rises yeah so that wasn't the plan um, at all. So yeah, I got COVID at the beginning of January and I was off my feet for, I think, about three weeks. Um, it was bad. I couldn't walk up the stairs without like, stopping and catching my breath. I didn't think I was even going to go, let alone Mark. Um, it wasn't looking promising. But I got the negative test uh, and I was itching to get back out in the mornings to see what my body was capable of. and. Mark had been rested up for six weeks, so I was hoping that he was looking promising to get out in the morns and get a bit of a dander on his legs and, and see how he his fitness and everything was going. Um, so I put a plan together that we were going to get out and tackle something relatively easy that we had done before, just as a, a bit of a walk, see how we were getting on and take it from there. Um, 
and it wasn't pretty to, to say the least. This is the worst that our fitness is going to be at this point. It, we've got eight weeks of solid graft to, to get our fitness where it needed to be to go and tackle this mountain and to run around with cameras and, and try and record it. I was a bit skeptical whether we could do it in the eight weeks, but I'd been trying this long to get on this mountain that I couldn't give up on my dreams just yet. We both heard on the, the news and that from everyone that the borders were due to open around the end of January in Morocco and, and that was spurring us on to keep pushing that this is looking likely that we might get out here and, and take this mountain on. So we've been planning this trip for so long that we decided just to book the flights and hope for the best really. We booked them for mid-March and all of February was quiet. We didn't hear a word. Um, there was nothing in the news. There was nothing from Mohammed about what was going on in the country. And we didn't know really what was going on. Uh, and then we got this message from Mohammed towards the end of February saying, next week the borders are opening. We're good to go. We were going that this was happening. After many, many years of planning and trying to, to get to the summit of Tukul, we've finally done it. Oh, it's been many years in the making, but we're the tallest people in North Africa right now, the highest mountain in North Africa. Unbelievable. So we, here we are, three years later never thought that I would step foot on the summit of this mountain. It, yeah, it's, it's just like a dream. I, so much has changed and so much has happened in the world in the last three years that I never thought it would be possible to, to get traveling again, to, to get on these beautiful mountains again. We've had COVID, we've had heart conditions. We've both had fam like new additions to the family it's crazy to, to think what has changed in the last three years to where we are now. It could have been any mountain in the world. It didn't matter what mountain it was. It is what it meant to get traveling again and everything that put everything to bed that we had been through in the, the last few years. But there was something about Tukul that drew me back, the, the unfinished business on that mountain. And it was so good to get back and, and finally put that to bed. The other thing that really got me, I think, was, and you can see kind of from us and the footage of it all, was like, I didn't realise how emotional you get at the top of mountains. I didn't even think that that was a thing. I found myself coming down and getting really emotional about just things that were going on. But, you know, like so much has happened in from sitting at lunch, so at being at the highest point in North Africa, it just would have made it even better if I had had like a Greg's 
or something just to sign it off. Here we are having lunch at the highest point in that thing. So yeah, it meant a lot just to be able to uh, consider it was such a, a traumatic three years for everybody, never mind their own personal um, sort of wee setbacks that we had. So it was cool. So hopefully this is the start of just seeing what's out there and let's see where it goes.